So as the costume designer for both seasons of this show, can you talk about sort of the the biggest challenges that you have when it comes to working with the show and transitioning from the first season to the second season? The biggest challenge is trying to not up your game too much that you just take everybody out of a world that was pretty perfectly crafted, I'd say, in first season. And so that you just feel that it's a continuation to um, the first season because you're, I would say I've never designed a second season before, but my first tendency, and I think it's just a natural tendency is to think that you've got to sort of top yourself. So, um, but then you quickly realize, or I quickly realize that I, that these are characters and this is a world and that the audience has become quite attached to and that you, the most important part of my process is to honor that and to continue telling that same story so that it is difficult because you're you're you want to maintain that you want it to feel seamless and that it's a, a real continuation of the same story yeah i mean obviously at when we're at the tva i think it's everybody's sort of dressed in, I wouldn't say like, a well, some of them are in uniform, but they all have like a very um, homogenous look. And I've noticed that there's little details on everybody's um, like clothing that kind of like singles them out as a person. Is there, um, how do you, how do you go about that process of sort of customizing each um, the uniform or costume for each of these characters in this homogenized space? In the re- in the, some of the original research for the first season of Loki, I looked at a lot of NASA um, photographs and just what people did and the what people were wearing when it was like the moon launch and control command center and the different variations. Even though it, there's obviously a dress code and just how people personalize things, right? Um, no matter what, it's like giving a kid a school uniform. They're always going to personalize it. So um, my approach to just, there was, all, there, there was that element of like, yes, we can, the TVA can strip away all of your past and sort of make you just this worker bee in this sort of uh, social structure. But, um, but you're, there's always going to be a little tendency to personalize. And then also just this, there was, there is also the consideration of hierarchies and trying to really create some levels of hierarchy within that system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I also noticed that all of the ties have a square bottom, which I thought was very interesting (laughs) for all the characters. Um, So when we're looking at this full season, I mean, there have been some amazing costumes. I think especially in this most recent episode where we're going back to the World's Fair, it's everybody's got an amazing. I mean, I love Ravona's costume the most. I think she looks amazing. Um, But do you have um, do you have an episode that you were the most excited to sort of see come to life? I would say I was really excited to see the, the episode three come to life for sure. I mean, of course, there's ones that I can't talk about, but um hundred um, percent love was so looking forward to seeing how it would all work together and to, and how we, how the midway, cause we worked really hard and trying to be as authentic to the world's fair as possible uh, and give it still a Loki feel. So I think we managed to do both those things. Um, but in saying that, I also really enjoyed doing the seventies because I thought it was a great, um, segue from the TVA having just been in the TVA for that amount of time in episode one to then just be rocketed into a dramatically different and glamorous world, um, felt like really right for the story and really fun to do costume wise to to get a little glamour in and especially like with Lumi to be able to give Mm -hmm. her moment it's fantastic yeah oh that's true she did she had a great costume in that in that scene too um when it comes to dressing these this cast i mean obviously each character has their own personality like we were saying um do you how how do you approach it when it comes to their specific wardrobe like for the actors specifically or the characters do is there does each person have like a color scheme or is there like a recurring theme yes because it all comes from their character right so for instance Tom 
there are just things that a Loki and Loki is going to choose aesthetically, I think, that are so built into that character and also just built into Tom's physicality, right? So like the turning up of the collar, the way things fit, uh, the silhouette is always so specific to Tom. Um, And with like a Sylvie, I think that her character always needs to feel like it's on the run. And um, so I think the movement in the clothing is always important and the aging of her clothing is always important to make it feel that she has been there's history because um there is history (laughs) and i think her uh and also her swagger as a character i think always comes from that uh, that androgynous sort of mobility um uh, and always kind of ready for battle. Even if she wants to live a regular life, there's always <laughs> some part of her that's on edge. Um, and I, I really do love, I do love her androgyny. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, I, this season, I love that big coat that she's wearing too. Like the little, I think it's like houndstooth coat that she has over everything. It's very like comfortable, but also like she's ready to leave at any moment. <laughs> Right. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and a, a nod to her trying to live her, a Loki version of a normal life. Um, and the houndstooth being a little bit of a nod to the eighties. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's a great, it's a great costume. And I like when she just snaps and she goes back to her old, her old outfit. It's like, okay, yeah, she's always ready to, to get into action. Right. Um, and, and then in response to the Renslayer, I think that she's always straddled in character wise what does strength mean in terms of masculine and feminine and what are silhouettes uh that uh reflect strength that can be both masculine and feminine i so i think uh with her costume even in this season there the color choice leans into that a little bit has both can kind of straddle both a masculine and a feminine side and then the the suit itself is actually a bicycle riding suit from that era it's actually pants which is oh culottes okay i love that i did not realize that they were pants yeah and it um that they existed in the era but women didn't really wear pants in that era but except Mm. those so okay Okay. Um, there's obviously a wide range of styles as we're going through this show um, in season one as well as two, because we're obviously jumping through time. But when you're kind of looking for inspiration for this show, do you turn to anything other than, you know, obviously historical documentation and things like that? Is there something there that you're always like, okay, this is where I can go to sort of re-up my creative juices, so to speak? I definitely love a fabric store. I think fabric stores textiles textiles always give me a lot of inspiration but so does art for color palette for texture for what um uh i think that I'm trying to think in specific like in the season 1 just going to that brutalist like really looking towards like a brutalist language was very helpful in all those details you pointed out in the TVA uniform um so and of course talking to the production designer is also another huge part of my references but um but yeah i i and i like to also um dig deep into real real life inspiration like real people from history Mm -hmm. to use that as a, a launching point as well yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's it's really fun to see sort of your twist on it, because obviously these are not characters who live in the time. So they kind of have like little touches of like not modernity, but I guess like out of time sort of asynchronous style. So I, I really I enjoyed that a lot. Um, just looking at this show, obviously, there are many characters. Do you have a favorite character that you like to dress or you look forward to designing, you know, thinking up ideas for? Well, that's just uh, such a tough question because I think every <laughs> one I, I just for me so much of a co- of costume designing is so in the moment so every every single one I do I think is my favorite one 
<laughs> basically, but it has been really fun to, to travel through this with um, obviously with Tom and Sophia um, and just go through that, go through season one and season two with them has been. Yeah. I love the green accents on all of the Lokis. That's my favorite part to sort of look for like, Oh, there's some piping there. That's green. And like, you know, a little bit of that personality. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's really. And do you have like a favorite piece from season two? Because obviously there's a lot, I mean, I love those culottes, but maybe there's something else that you, you, um, you enjoyed, you know, sort of seeing, uh, in the character, so to speak. I did, but well, I loved um, Tom's 70s tuxedo, but I also really loved um, General Dox's uniform in the war room because there's this, and I don't know, oh, that yeah. it's very visible uh, from the, the camera angle, but the um, the details, hit her, her swag on her shoulders is actually um, the timekeeper's it's actually, it's beaded. It's all beaded. The time to keep her heads. Oh, oh, wow. Her. On her, on her like Apple little, lens. yes. Oh my gosh. I need to go back and <laughs> take a look at that. Oh, it's hard to see, but the, it's um from that angle. But yes, that I, I would say there's details on that costume that are so magnificently crafted. Um, I just wish you could see it more. <laughs> <laughs> I always I always feel that like once I see the picture the like when they display costumes like oh there's like all these little things that I wish we got to see you know a little bit closer they could just linger the camera there a little you know a couple minutes um so I was just talking to Kazer and I talked to uh Dandelu last week and they both obviously have um roles in this show that are not directing but they are directors do you have any aspirations for directing next or is it just you know you're fine where you are with costuming you've got a lot on your hands i guess i'd love to direct i mean i've definitely i i would say i think i even told somebody on on our flag means death i was like can i just do season two can i direct a season two um well, only only things that I know so uh, I characters I know so well. I feel that there's a real value to knowing these characters so well when you get to do multiple seasons or you even just one really tough season of a show. And especially as a costume designer, you're you are really carving out what those characters are going to be and where mm-hmm. they're going to go. So you get to know you have to get to know them if you're doing your job well as a costume designer you're getting to know them really well to inform your design decisions yeah definitely i mean i have to say i we're not here to talk about our flag means death but i love our flag means death (laughs) and costuming in that show is also amazing um i just you know i can't i can't say enough good things about your work and um i can't wait to see what else you have in store for the rest of the season i know you can't spoil it but i'm looking forward to it very much um i just want to thank you for speaking with me and taking the time to talk with me and um thank you very much thank you thank you